Um, so this is an artery with blood cells coming through it, and over the years, as uh, we expose ourselves to fat and horribleness, you get little plaques developing which narrow the arteries. Occasionally, they get little tears in the artery, and that makes those plaques bigger. Mostly, that just leads to restriction in the blood supply when you're exercising, and the blood cells can't get through and causes angina. It might become much more severe and completely block the blood flow. And when that happens, the heart doesn't get enough blood and the patients get chest pain, and that's a heart attack. In the early 60s, the treatment for that was to bed rest for a couple of weeks, sometimes longer. And in the 80s, we really evolved our treatments with drip treatments, very powerful clot buster drugs, which were able to dissolve those clots, restore the blood supply, salvage the muscle, and improve outcomes. And now we've got to the ages where we can stick in balloons and stents and catheters to mechanically open those arteries. And Oxford has had a major history in the treatment of acute heart attacks. And uh, the ISIS trials were really revolutionary in translating some of those clot-busting drugs and have transformed how over, uh, in the whole world, in fact, those treatments were implemented. And in fact, clot-busters remain the mainstay of treatment in the majority of the world. But what would happen if this happened today? Well, what you should do is call 999. The paramedics in Oxford would record an ECG. They would rush you to the hospital. Uh, and what would happen is they would telephone the coronary care unit where one of the nurses would receive the information, call in the team. The patient would be taken along the corridor to one of our catheter labs and uh, meet with our staff. We would uh, try and get a tube into the heart artery and this is what we would expect to find. As I described, the artery is blocked. And after a little bit of work with some balloons and stents, we can open the artery and restore blood supply to this area of the heart. This is a treatment which is available to, uh, to all ages. Sometimes we, uh, we end up with few problems after the heart attack, like a leaking valve. But it's fair to say these complications are much less than they were a few years ago. And these modern effective treatments are reducing the complications. Most patients would expect a short stay in hospital. And it might even be that you have your artery approached through the wrist rather than the groin these days. They would get rehabilitation. We would anticipate that most patients would in fact survive their heart attack and return to a normal life. Well, we really want to work even better. And even though we anticipate that there's a little bit of damage, as you can just see, there's this area of the heart isn't pumping very well on this ultrasound scan, we want to work to reduce that damage even further. And we want to try and understand how we might prevent this from happening at the first place and how we might prevent it from happening again. So there's a whole range of things from prevention to early recognition of heart disease, having a whole team working both at the prevention stage and the treatment stage, and rehabilitating patients. And we're very lucky in Oxford to be really one of the few centres in the country where there's this very close association between the university and the hospital trust in, 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 in the form of a, a, a nationally recognised biomedical research centre. Our focus at the Oxford Heart Centre is to deliver high quality, cutting edge, world leading care to our patients. We want to improve that treatment and deliver that through research. And we want to train future doctors as a teaching hospital.